When Apple launched their iPhone last year, certain members of staff were heard to describe it as the best thing ever. So what could the iPhone 3G be? The best thing ever plus one? Well, we happen to have one right here. So let the playground one-upmanship begin. Firstly, well, I've got an old iPhone here and the new 3G one on this hand. Let's compare the physicality. Is one bigger than the other? Well, looking at the width, the iPhone 3G is slightly thicker, 12.3 millimeters to the original iPhone's 11.6. But its tapered edges actually make it look a little bit thinner. Stack them on a table. And the iPhone 3G is slightly wider, but really not so you notice. In fact, the iPhone 3G sits just as nicely and snugly in the hand as ever. Build-wise, it's now sporting a plastic back. Black in the case of this 16 gig model, but as the dirty van legend goes, also available in white. The 8 gig models will just be available in black, however. Now, plastic, I hear you say, sounds cheap, but true to other Apple products, like the MacBook, for example, it feels high quality and incredibly sturdy at the same time. And the buttons around the edges here are now all metal. Thankfully, that recessed headphone jack that we found on the original iPhone is just a distant memory. Now, it's completely flush with the body, so you can use whatever 3.5 millimeter headphones you so wish. But let's get into the real meat, which is the improved connectivity. Now, I was an original iPhone skeptic and studiously avoided the first one. Why? Because I'm a mobile blogger through and through. If the phone doesn't have a decent web connection, I'm just not interested. Well, thankfully, now the iPhone is 3G. 3.5G, to be accurate, with HSDPA downloading speeds. Now, that's not quite as fast as the inbuilt Wi-Fi, which in the stuff office shows a very healthy two or three bars, as opposed to the original iPhone's just two, but it's good enough for all my blogging needs. In fact, having dual wielded the Nokia N95 8 gig and the Sony Ericsson C902 for a while, when I loaded up a web page, the iPhone was the winner every time. Keeping the iPhone in line with phones like the N95, it's the inclusion of built-in GPS and assisted GPS. Now, the iPhone was using cellular triangulation location technology before, so its locations weren't particularly accurate. But with inbuilt GPS, that means you're going to get much more precise locations. Good for accuracy, probably bad news for your battery life. And for our second course, there are improvements on the email. The iPhone now supports Microsoft Exchange, so you can get your email pushed directly to your iPhone BlackBerry style. Then the rebranded .Mac, now called Mobile Me, will sync all your calendar, your email, all your contacts directly to your iPhone. And there's even support for PowerPoint and Office documents if you really want to get all corporate with your new toy. But what we're really excited about is the new Apple App Store just for the iPhone. Now before, if you wanted to get third-party applications on your iPhone, you had to jailbreak it, while the likes of the Nokia N95 users were glorying in a smorgasbord of exciting programs for their phone. Well, not anymore. You'll be able to download apps like Fring, eBay, or Sega's Super Monkey Ball, which makes use of the iPhone's accelerometers, direct to your iPhone. So what are the downsides? Well, the iPhone is still lacking in basic functions or just completely behind the times in others. Sure, it's a boon to finally be able to multiply delete and move messages, but where's our MMS texting? And where's the ability to simply cut and paste text? Not on this phone. The two megapixel camera is still completely below par. No autofocus, no flash means you're gonna struggle in low light conditions, but how much? Well, in true Blue Peter fashion, we did a test earlier with the Nokia N95 and the Sony Ericsson C902 just to see how each of them fared. And with the iPhone's built-in iPod being a major buying factor, you'd expect it to have some up-to-date media features like A2DP Bluetooth, for example, video recording or flash support, but no. Perhaps the most contentious issue about the iPhone is the price, with it equally being labeled a bargain and a rip-off. Well, it's significantly cheaper than the original iPhone. In fact, you can get an iPhone 3G for free if you sign up to O2's top tariff of £75 a month. But realistically, you're not gonna to wanna to do that. Realistically, you'll be looking at between £59 and £159 for the middling two tariffs, depending on what model you go for. So will I be getting one? Well, the lack of a decent camera means my mob blogging days are going to suffer or die out altogether. But the fantastic interface, the brilliant web browsing and the really easy to set up email means, well, 
I'll give it some serious consideration.